Morning, everyone. I can see people joining. Infants. Good morning. Thank you for joining this today's webinar on finances in crisis times. My name is Jean Chawapiwa. I'm the country director for We Connect International in South Africa. I'm gonna hand straight over to Ria. Uh, Ria is presenting this morning with Shamel, uh, both accountants in the We Connect network in South Africa. So thanks ladies very much for this. I'm really excited. Over to you, Ria. Morning ladies, I hope you're having a wonderful morning. Um, thank you for joining us for this webinar, dealing with business finance in times of crisis. Um, my name is Riyama Foko from Dalana Chara Content. With me is um, the presenter for today is Shamel Fleming. She's a CA with vast experience from large corporate businesses. She's the founder and director of F12, a company that assists businesses with bookkeeping, accounting, and admin functions with cloud-based techno accounting technology. Um, she started F12 with, because of a passion with um, business growth and success. So just um, housekeeping, housekeeping rules. Everybody has been put on mute and um, regarding questions, because everybody has been put on mute, we've got, you can check on question and answers Q&A below to ask questions feel free. We will break three times um, for questions and Thank you for joining us. Shamel, our presenter, will start. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. So before we dive headfirst into this webinar, I want to take a minute to acknowledge everyone that has joined us. So much has happened in the last few weeks and I hope that you and your family are safe um, and, and dealing with this, 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 this difficult time. I've been so overwhelmed by the amount of information that I receive and because we're always connected, we're always on, we're always plugged in, it just becomes so completely overwhelming. My hope with this presentation and the webinar is to give some perspective to what relief is available for small companies and that we turn the panic that has been, uh, has been out there into some form of preparedness and some uh, problem solving for your business. This, in this presentation is, is not advice, it's merely for to inform everyone else. Um, and because we're living in a constantly changing environment, uh, once you've identified relief measures that you feel is applicable to your business, is to contact the sources directly. We should also bear in mind that none of our systems has ever been designed to deal with this volume of queries and um, processing. So we should understand that there will be backlogs, there will be teething problems with some, if not with all the, the relief measures that we're going to step into. And we should therefore just manage our expectations accordingly and that we shouldn't place too much reliance on timing and probability um, of the, the forecasting. Things are really changing at a very rapid rate. If you work your way through most of the relief measures, there is a common thread of documentation that is required. And to me, it's so important that small businesses um, ensure that they are constantly compliant it's always good governance to have all documentation updated. And um, if we, for example, if, um, if, all the, if all your documents that they required for funding was available from day one, it means you can join the queue just that much quicker. So I'm gonna just briefly work through some of the, some of the documents that's required and, and in my opinion should always be up to date for all small companies. The first one is the annual financial statements. Um, and this is a document that is prepared by an accountant and signed off by anybody that is registered with an accounting professional body. It's prepared every 12 months. And it does have, uh, it, it does compare the previous 12 months as well. And it consists at least of a balance sheet, your cash flow, your income statement, and then accounting policies and notes that's applicable. 
In terms of the Companies Act, it should be repaired within six months after year end. Um, the, and um, the other important documents for businesses is your management account. And these are financial reports that is prepared by management and owners in order to do the day-to-day -day running and um, to make strategic decisions. At a minimum, they should consist of a balance sheet and income statement, and then documents that is needed for your business. So in my business, creditors are normally settled within the month, but debtors aren't. So I track debtors quite, quite, quite importantly. So it would depend on what you need to run it, manage your business appropriately. It should be prepared on a monthly basis. And like I said, it's for internal purposes only. Um, and then another document I'd like to touch base on, and there's some confusion out in the market, is your tax compliance status. Previously, SARS used to have a tax compliance certificate that was issued on a 12 monthly basis. And it indicated that on that day, you were tax compliant. You used to be able to get a hard copy printout at, at the SAR, any SARS office. That is no longer applicable. From the end of October of last year, um, the tax compliance status uh, system has kicked in. It's a real-time system, meaning that uh, you could be compliant today if you miss a return or you're late on a payment, it then automatically kicks you into non-compliance. And if you issued someone with a PIN, they would be able to, know, to, 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 to see that you're non-compliant. Um, there are four sections that, that the status looks at. It's uh, all your debts are paid with SARS. Uh, all your returns has been submitted, even if it's a zero return. Um, you have registration for all your tax, your ta different tax types. And if there's any supporting documents that SARS needs additionally, that those have been submitted within the deadlines. This is also linked to this uh, central supplier database, meaning if you're not, if you're not tax compliant on SARS side, it automatically pulls through into the, the CSD. And, and, and like I said, it's a real time system. Another document that uh, is important is your UIF compliance certificate. And that is issued by the Department of Labor. Um, you've got to email them and request. Uh, the, there's, there's two forms that needs to be filled in. And, and they've got a 10 day turnaround time. And why this is important is there's a direct link between SARS and the Department of Labor on the UIF. Because if you run a larger payroll and you make your UIF payments through SARS, uh, they then uh, link up with, um, with the Department of Labor. All payments made to SARS on behalf for the UIF is transferred over. And um, your payroll system does allow you to automatically do return. So even if you make the payment on the SAR, at, with SARS, you still need to submit your return. And I think that's vitally important. So it, it, it's, it's very important that we understand that these documents for all small companies, whether we're in a pandemic situation or not, should be updated and readily available at all times. So I wish I could put a black screen for the UIF COVID TERS, um, a uh, uh, for the TERS, because at the moment it is absolutely uh, frustrating for all businesses, uh, for accountants, I've had a hit and a miss when it comes to submissions. So like I said initially, we should understand that the UIF was never designed to handle this many transactions and this many queries. Um, so there is some hiccups, there is some um, backlog um, and we will just, we, we just have to move through it. So this is the UIF TERS is a short term relief scheme for employees that aren't able to receive their full salaries, right? Um, and so what, I, what, what is important here is to note that for a minimum, the, the minimum benefit that anyone will receive is 3,500 per month. Now, if we consider that the lockdown period was more than um, a month, you will receive the equivalent of 35 days. Um, the maximum benefit that anyone will receive would be 6,638, and that's once again a month. So when you receive your lockdown period, it means that it is uh, for the equivalent of 35. Cycus issued a, a guidance on whether you pay a portion of when an employer pay, pays a portion of a salary or not. And that really does affect what TERS benefit you get. Um, so when you do your submissions, and the submission has now been moved to an online system, uh, there is a, an indication of whether you pay for a salary or not. 
if you if there's no intention of paying for your salary the amount should be left at zero if there is please indicate this amount um, so the, the confusion was created around um, TERS would pay out a certain benefit and the employee would do a top-up but that was not that is not the practical how they are implementing it um, if you are going to pay a salary please indicate it and don't top it up because that's not uh, in the spirit of how we were going to to how this thing was designed to set up there is a sliding scale to determine how much you will be paid and it is normally between 38 and 60 percent um, if you are a higher income earner, you will be less, you will receive closer to the 38. If you're a lower income earner, it will be closer to 60. And then we're going to move into the SARS, um, the SARS relief measures that's available. And I want to say, and it is unfortunate, uh, many clients have phoned, many other accountants have spoken about it as well, but there is no VAT deferral, there's no VAT relief that is due today for, for, for those that has, a, that has a, a deadline for today. So there unfortunately is no VAT relief whatsoever. And um, I don't know if that is going to be on the cards later on, but at the moment there's no VAT relief at all. So the first uh, uh, relief that was introduced is the pay as you earn and STL. So pay as you earn is your payroll liability that's due to SARS. Um, and what SARS has indicated is that you are allowed to defer 30% of only the element that relates to the pay as you earn from the months of April to July without incurring any penalties or interest. This total deferral amount must then be repaid over six uh, equal installments from August to, to January 2021. And this will not, so, so the, the, the deferral amount will not attract any interest or penalties. And if you make the, as soon as you start repaying the deferral amount, uh, that will also not and won't affect your tax status as well. So who qualifies for this relief? So it's all companies with a gross income of less than 100 million Rand. And that is for the period of 1 April 2020 to 1 April 2021. Um, if you are going, if you, if you think you're going to um, breach the, the 100 million threshold, Please don't um, try and, and claim the benefit if it's not due to you, because SARS is going to levy penalties and interest, and it could affect your tax status as well. The definition for gross income is really your sales, excluding any of your VAT. So um, you need to be tax compliant, and you need to be registered as a pay-as-you-earn um, employee on the 1st of March, 2020. Um, a common thread that I've also picked up through all the relief measures, whether it's government, private, is that it needs to be for existing companies. This is really, the relief measures are really not aimed at startups. Um, and then the other, the only holiday that SARS has, meaning that you don't need to pay any of the money and that you don't need to pay at a later stage, is your skills development levy. And from the period of May to August, you, have, you don't need to pay anything over to SARS in terms of that. And it also doesn't need to be caught up again. So in the example, I was just trying to, in, to illustrate the difference between um, the different pay as you earn liabilities, the relief available, um, the SDL, and then really the total amount that needs to be paid over to SARS. The second table is to demonstrate that if you do accept the tax relief measure, please be aware that from August, you then need to pay the full pay as your own liability, additionally to the relief that now needs to be caught up, which is the total deferral over six months. Uh, and then when we do our cash flow, that comes, that comes through quite uh, clearly. Uh, the next uh, relief measure that SARS has introduced is the ETI, which is your Employment Tax Incentive. So this is a rebate benefit that SARS allows employees to claim against their pay as you earn liability. And this is for all employees that earns less than 6,500 Rand a month, is aged between 18 and 29, and that has a valid ID. So under the relief measure, they've now included it to expand, they expanded it to include all employees. So everyone from the age of 18 to 65 is now entitled to this benefit. 
this benefit can be increased up to 75, 750 rand per employee. And initially, the ETI uh, refund deduction was, was initially every six months. It's now accelerated to a monthly basis. You are allowed to claim this only from April to July. And if you do run a payroll system, your payroll system should be able to handle this. And then again, the people that qualify this, if you have a gross income, the provisional tax. So um, on uh, SARS allows you to pay over, make over two payments. So it's 50% of your liability on 50% um, on your first payment and 50% on your second payment. And then should you have a top, if should you need a top up, you can do an additional on your third provisional tax payment. The relief measure simply indicates that instead of paying 50% with your first provisional tax payment, you are allowed to pay 15. And your second one, instead of paying the balance of the 50, you can pay 65 of your total liability. And then the 35 that is left, you can then do on your third provisional tax payment. And none of these deferrals will uh, draw interest or penalties. The gross income definition still applies, so it's 100 million, and you need to be tax compliant. Um, I just want a, a word of caution that this doesn't mean that SARTA is going to, to you, you, you still need to pay your total liability. It's just the cash flow that needs to be paid over that SARTA has given a concession on. Uh, then the last sort of additional, me the last uh, measures that SARTA has given is to allow the carbon tax for, so the filing and payment of your carbon tax has been deferred from the 31st of July to the 31st of October. And then SARS has also allowed as an employee, you are allowed to deduct uh, donations from your employees um, to the Solidarity Fund. There's a specific deduction code for that. And that will be applicable for year ends only until the 28th of Feb, 2021. So the donation will then, um, you, the donor, you are allowed to deduct the donation and pay it over to the Solidarity Fund from the 1st of April to the 30th of September. Um, and then there's also a maximum, 33% 30, maximum remuneration. So the donation can't be more than a third of the, the salary. And just an important note, tax payers, that's for companies, that is for employee, that's tax companies and um, individuals who donate to the Solidarity Fund are then entitled to claim 10% of the donation against their taxable income. Um, and because SARS has a document retention policies, just be aware that when you do submit your tax return for next year, that you bring this into account and that you also keep sufficient documentation available. So Ria, I think this is a great time to take any questions from the webinar because we've dealt with the SARS relief measures. Okay, Shamel. Um, we've got one question. Um, it's about how do um, they, do they have to apply each month for UIF? Um, Ria, we are, we at the moment, we are not certain, but uh, when I did the application for the UIF, for the lockdown period, it specifically stated that um, that that it it looked like it was a uh, a monthly application, and because of the online system, um, I think that is an indication. So we'll have to just keep track of what the the Department of Labor issues us. But at the moment, it does look like it's a repeat a repeat process. Shamel, I just want to add on top of that, the, um, this morning, actually, um, one of the is, um, accounting institutions, they did say that it's on a monthly basis, and they are aware that the, the website has not been working for the last three days, so the April deadline, which was supposed to be today, has been extended. So everybody that was, was panicking that today is the last day and the website is not working, 
um, don't be alarmed because it has been extended. And that is it from my side with the patients. Uh, thanks, Ria. I just wanted to add to your point as well. Uh, the application on the online application is significantly simplified from what they initially released in April. So it is, it's not too much of a tedious process to do it on a monthly basis. Okay. okay. So that's all the questions then. Um, let's move on to the stimulus. So I've divided this into two sections. We'll deal with it as the private sector, the, the, the funding available for private sectors and then the funding made available by government. Um, I've mentioned it before that most of this relief programs and funds are for operating companies and not for startups. And the thinking behind it is that there are other programs available that startups can make use of. And because we are living in such a, a liquid and fluid um, environment, we need to act quite quickly. And another, uh, another point that I've just picked up across them all is they will not refinance or finance pre-existing debt. So if, 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 you're, if the intention is for them to help you out with that, that doesn't exist to any of the relief measures that we're going to cover at the moment. So uh, we're going to start with the South African Futures Trust, and that's a billion rand um, a fund that was donated by the Oppenheimer Generation. And it's available to all companies that has a turnover, an annual turnover of less than 25 million rand. That they, and they must have been trading for at least two years. Um, you must have had, a, your business must, be, uh, must, must have been sustainable as at the end of February of this year and that you're adversely impacted by, by the COVID pandemic. Um, so just to make sure that, so, so the relief measure is a loan um, you are, the employer is allowed to apply on behalf of the employee. It's a 750 Rand per employee per week, limited to 15 weeks. So it's a total of 11,250 per, empl per employee. The funds will be transferred direct to, directly into your employee's uh, bank accounts. And then the employer is entitled, it should be, should repay the loan. So this is not a salary. This is merely intended as a short-term relief measure for otherwise destitute um, employers. So as I mentioned, the employer needs to then repay those funds. Um, the period is a 60-month repayment term. It is interest-free. So in terms of social laws, the tax benefit, um, the, there's actually a benefit attached to this, but it will not be taxed. Um, and that was been agreed with, with SARS. So if you are, if you're an eligible employer, you can, you can apply with your preferred bank. So there's six banks, it's Standard Bank, APSA, First National, Investec, NetBank and Mercantile. And then they will uh, then process the application. The, and so you must be a part, you must be an existing client at one of these six banks in order for you to make, to, to, to apply for, apply for this. Then we're going to have a look at the giving of the Hope Foundation. So currently they have a hundred million available with the intention of growing it to 500 million. Um, and so hopefully they'll, they'll get there because I think, I think the common economy and small businesses really needs that. Um, so it's available to all registered South African companies and the, your operation must be based here and you must be uh, Shira compliant. And so that, means that there's the Soshira compliance means it's based on principles of the Islamic religion and there's two underlying principles that they look at is how profit is shared and that the prohibition of interest charged by lenders and investors. Um, so then it should have an annual turnover of less than 20 million rand, more than five employees and that excludes family members that works in the business and the business needs to be credit worthy. So the loan is up to a million rand, and it is interest, admin, and profit free for the first twenty for the twenty four month repayment period. The repayment so the repayment uh, starts on month thirteen. So you have a payment holiday for the first twelve months, and then you need to pay in equal installments over the next twelve months the total amount loan amount that you've paid. Um, just to make you aware that 
security is required for this loan. And I think that's important when we, when we consider whether we want to take it or not. So there's an online application form and then you submit your documents through a dedicated uh, portal that is available. Um, then we look at the Sukuma Relief Programs. Um, and that was for the, the funds that was donated by the Rupert family. And the fund is administered by business partners. So I know that it is currently closed. Uh, they've closed applications due to the high volume. But the intention is that if they have worked through the backlog and there is still funds available, that they'll reopen applications again at a later stage. Um, so I think it's always just a good idea to keep an eye out on whether this has been um, to be added to their mailing list. So if they do app open applications again, you're aware of it. And then just if you could collect your, your documents in advance, that would, be, that, would, that would help the process. So it's, it's all companies based in South Africa that's registered, um, that has been affected by COVID, and that uh, is SARS and UIF compliant. So what's available is, this is one of the few funds that has a grant. So it's a 25,000 once off grant that's made available. And additionally to that, you have a loan between 250,000 and a million rand. And that is structured over 60, day, uh, 60 months. So over the first 12 months, there's no repayment that needs to happen. There is also no interest that, it will, that will be charged on the loan amount. Uh, the interest then will be, they'll, so you'll start paying interest uh, from month 13. And then repayment always also needs to commence from, from, from that period on. Just to also say that no security is required for this loan. So I think it's, it's very important to understand what is required from, from the business side. So on this re program, no security is needed. The application process is, is quite straightforward. You need to submit all your documents to it and there's an online application process that needs to be followed. So the other element of the relief program, the Sukuma relief program is for sole proprietors. And that's, so that is everybody that, a sole proprietor is really someone that runs their business in their own name and takes personal liability uh for 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 the businesses for the business running of the business so they will they receive a twenty five thousand rand once off grant that does not need to be repaid and this money can be used to cover any overheads that the business might have incurred and the application is very similar to the to that of the companies so you complete the the, the form uh, the online the application form and submit all your documents just to reiterate again, that this, this um, measure has been, the, the relief program has been closed. And if there is any funding available after they have, um, after they've worked through the backlog, they should then reopen, um, reopen it and try and help more companies. Um, then as part of uh, the government's 500 billion stimulus package, they announced that the bank guarantee loan scheme. And that is, so what we've done is they, there's, there's not much information available except what Treasury has published. And I'll just touch on the salient points of, of how the scheme looks like. So what this means is loans will be, loans um, will be granted by private banks, by um, the, the banks in South Africa, to companies over with a turnover of less than 300 million to fund operating expenses. And the government will stand guarantee for this. So a guarantee is simply, in this case, the government promises to cover any losses if the person um, is unable to make the, the repayment of the loans. So then loans will, be cover, loans will cover three months of your operational cost. Uh, you are allowed to, to access the funds on a monthly basis. And there's possible surety and security that need to be provided on some of these loans. There will be a single um, agreed upon lending rate across all the, the businesses. So meaning your interest rate at um, NetBank or First National will, will be the same. And you are only allowed to have one of these um, COVID loans um, in total. Each company is only allowed to, to apply for one. Um, there's a six month repayment holiday, but interest is charged from day one. And you will have 60 months to, to repay this 
Um, so we will receive more information as the banks start rolling it out over the next couple of weeks. And so just uh, follow specifically your specific bank's application process. So I've ended with uh, the bank guarantee scheme. And it's really, it's a partnership between government and private sector. Andrea, I think this is then the perfect, the perfect time to take any questions from your um, private relief uh, measures that I've just discussed. Okay, Shamel, um, we don't have questions yet, but I just wanted us to clarify how do businesses object or if they've got any issues with UIF, how do they, what is the process? Um, so Ria, I'm, I'll have to follow up on the process of, of how to object, but I would assume it, was, it will be um, on, the, on the portal where you've made your application, but I'll have to follow up on that as to see exactly how the objection, because that is available, so you, you are allowed to object to um, the funds that was paid out. Okay, we can carry on, thanks. Um, so the, the next uh, section of, of the webinar deals with uh, the relief measures that was made available by government. Um, and the first, so the, the, the Department of Small Business Development has really relief, released three schemes. Um, there's the business growth, there's the debt relief scheme, and then there's the spaza shop scheme that they've, they've, they've introduced. So on the business growth and the resilience uh, facility that they've got available, that is geared for companies to take advantage of the, of the COVID pandemic to provide uh, products or goods to the local market, and then they can apply for, for loan funding for that. So you need to be a CIPC registered company as at the end of February. You must be 100% owned uh, by South African citizens and your workforce must consist of at least 75% South Africans. Priority will be given to, to women-owned businesses, youth-owned businesses, and people with disabilities. The loan um, will, interest will be charged at prime less five, and currently prime rate sits at 8.75%. So that's a really good uh, interest rate loan. Um, and you are allowed to use this loan to then fund operational expenses or your working cost, as well as capital expansion in order to gear your company to take advantage of this. So the application process uh, for all three schemes is, is similar. Initially, you need to register as an, on the SMME website, your business and your services. You will then be allocated a specific uh, reference number. This reference number needs to appear on all the application forms that you are going to send in. So you complete the application form and you upload it all, you upload all the required documents and there's two websites where you can do that on. And if you're non-compliant, because there's quite a, uh, there is a, a requirement for you to be UIF and SARS compliant. So if you are non-compliant, micro business, you can request assistance and there's specific email dealing just with business growth and resilient facility on non-compliant non um, small businesses. Um, then we have a look at uh, the department's other uh, relief scheme and that's the debt relief. So these are for companies that's been affected, neg uh, negatively affected by the COVID pandemic, indirectly or directly, and they can again also apply for loan funding. You need to be a CIPC registered company as at the end of February. You need to be 100% South African owned and at least again 75% of your workforce must be South African. So priorities will again be given to women, uh, youth and persons with disabilities. Uh, the loan is made available will be at prime less 5% and you are allowed to cover operating, operational costs, um, working capital, capital um, that's what you can apply the loan for. So you need to once again register with, on the SMME website. You'll then be, get, you'll be allocated a specific number. You complete the application form. That application form and the supporting documents needs to be uploaded, um, needs, to be, needs to be sent through. 
And then if you, once again, if you're a non-compliant micro business, you do have the option of asking for assistance. And this email address is different from the business growth um, email address, but you, you are allowed to just request assistance um, from them. Um, <clears throat> sorry, so let's go to the Spaza shops. So this fund is geared for all the Spaza shops and the applications are done at a NetBank branch or the NetBank has desks at uh, boxer stores. Um, so they'll also be able to assist with the, the funding application. So the uh, government, the department has, has realized that Spaza shops will need support on five different levels. And that is on the, on the purchasing or the networking power. And on that, they have then got, you, you are allowed to do bulk buying at pre, uh, you know, with, with pre-approved um, goods from specified, um, uh, pre, from pre-selected wholesalers. They then also assist with working capital and the credit facility, which is what we are discussing now. Uh, they also assist with business management skills, so that is training and in-house support for bookkeeping, inventory management, um, and then they also help with the environmental health and food safety standards. Um, and we, another support that they offer is legal compliance, so they assist in CIPC, UIF, uh, registrations and compliance as well as SARS. So um, the available funding is 3,500 capital investment and 3,500 revolving credit uh, for pre -select, at pre-selected wholesalers. Um, the application process, you need to apply, you need to register on the SMME website. Um, at, you will then either go to one of the participating NetBank branches or the NetBank desks at the box of stores. Um, and then, con and then uh, apply at the bank. The bank will submit the application to the department. And if you are approved, uh, you, will then you will then obtain a purchasing card or a procurement card uh, from the bank. And that, bank, that card then can be used at the participating wholesalers. There is a list available on the, on the website of the, where the branches are located, the boxes stores are located, as well as the wholesalers that's been identified. So the, the IDC, the Industrial Development Corporation, has two relief measures similar to the, the Department of Small Business Development. And the first is the essential supply intervention. So that is again for, for companies uh, that have capacity to manufacture product that's needed um, to curtail the combat of the uh, pandemic. And I'll, so there's a list of about sev of, of 17 um, goods that they look at. So I'll just mention a few. So it is masks, test kits, medical glove, packaging, sanitizing units, toilet papers, cleaning materials, ventilators, and so forth. But the complete list is available on the IDC website. So for this, this is only available for companies that has a track record. And once again, as I said in said earlier, is that most of the relief measures are really geared at uh, established businesses. So you must have a track record of, of manufacturing at least similar products to what they, they currently require. So if you are importing the goods, you must be able to do it at scale. And there must be insufficient local capacity to manufacture whatever you are importing. You need to be an accredited supplier. You must have a, a contract purchase order um, or a letter of intent. Um, you need to be historically profitable. And they've also put the limit on the, the there's a, a markup, uh, a limit on the markup. So they, they said it needs to be reasonable. And this is just really to prevent profiteering and price gorging um, of, of, of this, the, the items that we need. And your focus must be in South Africa or at least your Southern African Union countries. So the terms of this loan, um, so they can provide short-term loans for once-off contracts or importing funding. Um, they can provide you with a revolving credit facility. And then they also provide guarantees to banks uh, for banking facilities, imports, and ordering requirements. So their, their rate is prime plus 1%. They also have a look there. So the MCEP, which is a Manufacturing Competitiveness Enhancement Program, 
that loan facilities is at 2.5% per annum and guarantees they can provide at 2%. So there is a dedicated email address or there's a contact number uh, if you wanted to have more information on the IDC relief measures specifically. Um, then the next one is for a city relief for distressed businesses. So this is, so they only have a look at the in IDC mandated industries. And I think it's important to, to understand what that means. Um, there's, a, there's 12 sectors that is covered. Uh, they are agro-processing, chemical products and pharmaceuticals, basic uh, chemicals, clothing and textiles, heavy manufacturing, light manufacturing, media and audiovisuals, new industries, tourism, automotive transport and equipment, industrial infrastructure and basic metals and mining. So that is the only industry, that's, that's the IDC mandated industries that has been affected by the COVID pandemic and that is likely or reasonably unlikely to be unable to pay any of the debt or fund the current operating activities. So you must have strong business fundamental and you must have a sustainable business plan going forward. So your business case needs to indicate that if there are soft loans or concessionary finance that's introduced into the business, that you'd be able to turn around um, to, to turn around and become profitable again within 18 to 24 months. So that is, that is vitally important when you submit your cash flow projections and your business plan. So it's only available to South African companies. And then the risk must be shared with other funders. So the IDC wants um, to see that there's other funders that will also run the risk, if should you default, that the risk is not just solely with the IDC. Um, and an important element is that they have indicated that you first, before you apply for the IDC loan, you need to make use of any other support schemes that's available. So whether it's the UIF or the compensation fund, and the IDC will only really provide a top-up funding uh, for you and not the complete uh, requirement, the, the, the complete uh, need. So they, they specifically mention there's exclusion, so it's your normal expansion, refinancing, uh, share buybacks and non-operational expenses, and they, they specifically says bonuses. Uh, so the, what is available to companies? So they will provide debt and guarantees. Equity, um, so where they then take a share in your business is, will be considered, but that's only on a case-by-case -case basis. And they do have scheme-related concessionary pricing. Once again, there's a specific email, uh, there's even a contact number, um, and the information is available on the IDC website. So then we have a look at the, the NEF, which is the National Empowerment Fund. <clears throat> this is a 200 million rand uh, fund available. And this is for companies, again, that can manufacture medical supply or produce uh, food. So there's a whole host of things of what they've covered, uh, what uh, manufacturing they will cover and what food items they will cover. So you need to be a current and registered supplier with retailers. Um, and you must have, there must at least, or there must be a letter of intent and there you must, you know, and, and other institutes of, of good standing. Uh, they specifically also say, although all of them say that they will not cover pre-existing debt. Um, and then you need to be 50%, 50 percent and more black ownership and black management control which is very specific and not just looking at your, your shareholding over there. And then the intention of this fund is to either create, um, so it's at minimum to retain the current jobs that you've got within your business or to increase it. And you need to be, you know, all, this, the need, all of this needs to be commercially viable. So the loan that's available is amounts between 500,000 and a million rand per application. And this can be used for working capital, can be used for machinery or equipment that is needed. The first 12 months of the loan term is interest free and there's also no payments expected within that period. But after the 12 months, there is an interest rate of 2.5% that will be applied and the maximum loan term is uh, 60 months. 
So then we have a look at the tourism uh, relief funding, and this is a 200 million rand relief that's been introduced by the Department of Tourism. Um, it's, it's for all companies with a turnover of less than 2.5 million a year. Um, you need to have been in existence for at least 12 months and you must be a South African registered company. The categories that they look at is accommodation establishments, so hotels, lodges, B&Bs, guest houses and backpackers. Um, they then look at the hospitality and related services, so that's restaurants, uh, conference venues, professional catering, um, and then under travel and travel related is tour operators, travel agents, um, car rental companies, coach operators, uh, so that's, that's the, the categories that they consider. So the applications are opened from the first of for, opened on the first of April and it closes on the thirtieth of May, so it's still available. And there is a fifty thousand rand once off grant that does not need to be repaid, and then this will go towards fixed cost, operational cost, and supplies. The application is is done online, and and I've included the website on that. I have not included the department. compliant what does that can you explain a bit further regarding that okay so um most of the big banks has uh, has an element of of uh, sharia compliant or they call it islamic banking um, and how that looks is you're not allowed to charge interest and you need there's an element of how you share your profit that you make um, the, there's also industries that they specifically don't um, invest in so if your company is Shari compliant, um, you will be then allowed to apply for this. However, if it is not, so um, if it's not in one of the industries that they consider to be compliant, um, then you won't be able to. So they look at um, the industry you're in, how profit, how you make your, really how you make your money, and then also sort of what do you um, contribute to, to your environment, to your community as well. Okay, and um, another one, um, with a lot of these um, funds, somebody's asking, can I kindly request that we touch on the relief for companies that have been there for less than 12 months operating? Because it seems as of the information that has been given, it's on companies that are well established. So can we just touch down, because it seems as everybody thinks that um, a lot of people think that some of these funding is just for um, companies that have been operating for more than 12 months. So unfortunately, the major, the major uh, programs and relief measures that's been introduced is for established companies. Um, and so my, you know, I, I could say that uh, what I'd like to say is, Consider trying for startups and see if there is not some relief measures available uh, as a startup and not as an established business, because what we've covered is really just for companies. Um, so, I mean, so, some requirements is up to two years, but the minimum is at least for a year. So unfortunately, uh, the major ones don't have any relief for, for small company, uh, for companies under and at least under 12 months. Okay. Um, and one question was regarding the sharing of slides. Um, the slides will be shared. Um, I think Jean will just cover that when we are closing off. And um, Chanel, regarding the government website, do you think it's a good idea for SMMEs to register on the um, SMME website just for the funding or is it a good idea just to what would the benefit be basically if they don't even if they don't ask for funding but to register um so i i know there was issues with the security of that funding of that website um so my suggestion is if you are not going to apply for the funding um don't register because you the, the reason you register is so that you're allocated that number and then that your your reference number is included on the documents that you need to submit um, so at the moment my suggestion is um, and that's my personal opinion is don't um, if you're not going to apply for it uh, don't register on the website okay um 
The other one is just a comment actually regarding the tourism relief fund. Um, apparently they are now accepting um, applications. The lady is saying that they applied yesterday and received correspondence to submit documents this morning. And um, so clearly the tourism has opened again. Thank you so much for just um, telling us that. And over and above that, is there any um, form of re um, relief for event industry or freelancers that you are aware of? Um, unfortunately not, so they were specifically covered, um, uh, I read an article this morning that says uh, commission earners and freelancers have unfortunately slipped through the cracks. So if you have a look at this, the, the presentation that I provided, um, if, you don't, if you are not registered with the UIF, you, you're not entitled to claim from them. Um, unless you are a formal a sole trader, you could apply to the Sakuma Relief Fund, but that at the moment is closed. Um, so unfortunately, they are part of the group that um, I, I think just slipped through the cracks. So um, on commission earners and freelancers, unless you're part of the UIF fund, um, no, or unless the Sakuma fund opens again, unfortunately not. Okay. And um, the other one is regarding the, the question that I had asked regarding the URF objection. So the nice thing is that um, URF, when they give you the report with their objections and everything, what they have done is um, they give you the, the, the website or the email where you can object. So I just wanted to just give that answer regarding that. But um, that is it for for all the questions that have been asked. And ladies, thank you so much for joining us um, from Riyadh, from Talana Chatra Content. Um, Shamel, over to you. So uh, thanks again, ladies, uh, for joining us, for taking out the time. I hope this was valuable to you and your business. So uh, Shamel from F12, thank you very much for joining us. Um, and Jean, over to you. Thanks, Shamel. That was really, really useful. I love the way it was structured. So thank you for making it so much clearer. There's such a lot of information that we often just get lost in the information. So I love the clarity of your explanation. Thank you, everybody who joined. We will share the recording and the slides to everybody who registered for this. Um, and this is perfect timing. So thanks, everyone. Thanks, Vanessa, for all the organizing. Thanks, Ria, for the moderating. And then we'll see everybody on Tuesday when we've got another um, webinar on finances and crisis times. Have a great day. See you then. Bye. Bye.